let's hope this works. Hi, I'm Taylor Holmes. Again, I'm on a break from work right now. Uh, I want to share with you my last video is right here. It's not really all that important, but um, that's the previous video, video part two in this series. I'm still trying to build a thermoelectric cooler. Um, I haven't received all the parts yet. I have a, I've had a couple of the Peltzer units shipped to me. But let's stop talking about that. I want to get down to explaining very vividly what I'm trying to do, okay? This right here is a video, a link to a video of basically what I'm trying to do. The experimenter used a styrofoam box. I'm going to be using like an igloo cooler, and that's the only difference. Pause this video you're watching right now and check out that video, and then come back and finish this video so that you understand what this thing's supposed to look like. Um, the next thing I want to do is explain the Peltier effect, but I can't do it as well as a guy named Dan Rojas. The link to a video where he very, very, he, he explains very well the Peltier effect is right here. He's going to run through um, what it is to run current through a thermoelectric unit, and you'll see a temperature differential being created on the top and the bottom of the plate and it's really interesting. Uh, and another video that he made is right here where he explains the Seebeck effect which is the opposite of the Peltier effect. It's what happens whenever you just take a thermoelectric unit, you heat one side and cool the other side and what happens is a DC current is created, a little bit of voltage. And um, it turns out with this experiment I might be using a little bit of both the Seebeck and the Peltier effect.